welcome back Design Squad and in this sketch Noob to Master series we're gonna revisit something new in sketch which is gonna totally transform the way you design your things and you adjust and you update and you iterate your designs based on the user feedback let's say and we're talking about sketch smart layouts it's a new feature in version 58 if you haven't updated yet do so because it's gonna totally transform the way you do your product design and if you're not aware what smart layout is, check this out. And so as you can see, it's pretty damn intense and it's pretty damn awesome because it almost would allow you to work as if you have control of the CSS because your product design becomes now truly responsive and Sketch had so much capability in that regard already with the symbols and their positioning and resizing options but right now you're gonna be able to make complex layouts which can basically just you know shrink or expand as you need in this case i'm gonna show you exactly how i would approach using smart layouts because it's quite simple but it's also you know if you add multiple smart layouts it becomes a bit more complex but i'm gonna talk to you how i transform this card you see on the screen into the smart layout options as you can see everything here on my screen is just an object nothing is symbols if you remember from previous videos how to convert different objects into symbols you're gonna know that i could just select let's say these two objects for the button i could right click let's say create a symbol right away or click that option uh, up above and here what's new is that it asks you what sort of layout you want to pick to me it's like a no-brainer that this for example should be left to right layout so let's say if something is increasing from the left side we're gonna push the object lengthwise width wise so let's say let's try that click ok and now that smart object if i would go to its master in my symbols as you can see it's gonna have just a rectangle yada yada i'm probably gonna have to give it a name so maybe it's button uh, primary or something like that if i select the master as you can see i still have those options so it's horizontal or vertical um, i'm waiting for it to be both as well so it could stretch either way right now it's a bit two-dimensional at the time but you basically can then you know readjust the way you want to and so i selected center it as you can see i can now go ahead and just override with something like Hello there, buddy. Something with long text. Welcome to Noob2 Master or something like that. And boom, as you can see automatically as I hit enter, it just resized and it resized to the center. Now, if I would go back and just make it to the left and I would probably just reset the override. Let me push it back like so. And I would give it a different text, something, something, yada, yada. As you can see, it pushes everything now to the right from the left. So you have both options to play with and it's really amazing. And now, as you can see, we have one button which behaves like this, which is correct because I want it to stretch to the right, but the other one is overlap. So let me show you how I would do this. So it's all fluid to go back and I would create another symbol to that button. And it was BTN, let's see, this is secondary. And the layout is gonna be left to right because that makes most sense in the button case. I'm gonna show you as well top to bottom in a minute, but let me just click that. And as you can see, I'm gonna have as well the overrides and everything else ready for that button to act dynamically as I want it to act. I can make another symbol out of these two bad boys. And let me explain exactly why. Well, sketch in this case, if you make another symbol containing two, it's gonna make a new fluid smart layout of the two objects, and those objects are gonna act in a unison. And let's say if one resizes uh, lengthwise, the other is gonna be affected. Otherwise, they would just overlap depending on how layers are adjusted, if that makes sense. And so I selected both of them, gonna hit right click, let's say create symbol, and these are gonna be, let's call it buttons, I don't know, twins, whatever, button twins for now. And here, now I can, you know, make different adjustments here. Let's pick left to right in this case, again, because we know that it has to stick to that left bottom corner and then it can considerably expand in this case. 
I'm gonna click OK. Let's try overriding one of the bad boys here. So let's see, this is gonna be... And if I click Enter, you can see that boom! The second button got pushed. And if I hit the second button and I want to override the text there, it's gonna work the same exact way. So let me say override just for consistency sake. Boom! And now we have two buttons with overridden text. I'm gonna reset both of them back to business. Like so, I could connect this layout, you know, the box with the buttons. And if the buttons are overriding and let's say expanding, the card would expand as well, exactly the same way as I shown you with two buttons. You just need to start wrapping it up like onion, align it horizontally or vertically, however you want it to go. And then you can go forward. And so I'm going to demonstrate to you next the vertical alignment of a smart object, which is quite amazing. And it's, let's say, how the text would actually adjust depending on my needs. And so I have two text objects, as you can see. Now, both of them would have to go into symbol. And so I'm quickly going to just convert it into a new symbol, which is going to be, let's say, headline one. And this is, let's say, who is going to be headline two, headline two. Now I have, I skipped uh, putting the options for smart objects. So I'm going to go into my symbols and I'm just going to quickly select that they would, let's say, would have to be vertical or horizontal for that matter, which which, which uh, whichever you want to do, but I'm going to do vertical because it's already constrained horizontal and I just want to keep it that way. And I can just tell it from top to bottom, meaning whenever it becomes too big, everything else has to fall down amazingly like so and the same for the headline too if i select multiples of these and select also buttons and convert these all bad boys into a new symbol here i can say let's say card content vertical top to bottom or center layout I'm probably gonna go top to bottom boom and now I can test out what would happen if I, let's say, override it. So we know already that the buttons would resize anyhow. But what would happen if, let's say, I resize the headline one, the biggest one. And let me just lorem ipsum that. If I, my memory is correct. Not. Let's say like so. Boom, as you can see, everything shifts down. And the same is for this one too. And if I try to resize the second one, I'm just gonna paste in some gibberish, click next, and boom, you can see that everything adjusts magic. Now, some of the caveats before you just go on and go crazy with this new functionality and you become a bit of a master, I'm gonna show you how to actually wrap everything in one block. So let's say the card doesn't adjust. But as I mentioned before, the easiest way is to just select all those objects so the card the smart object you're planning to resize, create a new symbol and call it, let's say, MasterCard or something like that. And the layout, let's say, could be horizontally centered, but I think it's gonna be top to bottom because we are all expanding it apart from the buttons. And so I can go ahead and say top to bottom layout again, click OK, and now we have a card with massive amount of overrides. But let me just demonstrate really quickly what happens if, let's say, I just go ahead and paste again the gibberish in headline 2. Boom! The cart adjusts. How magical is that? It's amazing. Like, this is why I love product design and, and, you know, these new functionalities which are made for designers by designers. So it's amazing. Let me cover the caveats before we wrap up so you're actually a pro in this. If you go back to symbols, one of the things which you might want to adjust the actual sizing of the text. So let's say if I make a new text object, try to making it depending on how you want to resize. So let's say if the alignment is on the auto, like so, which is just wrapping the text, sometimes it just doesn't work. So text still gets cut out. So it's a good idea. So if let's say I want to it to stretch uh, vertically to select the vertical stretching, the auto height instead of just auto everything or auto width, which you maybe would want to use for the button text. And then it's quite easily adapts that way. If it doesn't work for you immediately, I would play with these alignment options because chances are your alignment is just telling to ignore everything else because you just select it that way. But if you play with auto width, auto height, it's usually like very immediate fix to any of the issue. And so as per usual, I hope it's useful. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, stay tuned in this playlist. The link is down below in the description section and I'll see you next time. <music>